Virgin Most Powerful Radio, sharing the gospel with clarity and charity. My name is Jesse Romero. I'm here in Texas in an undisclosed <laughs> bunker, uh, firing, firing off the truth, truth missiles. Terry, I'm on duty. What am I'm I on do? duty, sir. Jesse, we're two evangelical Catholics with PhDs in common sense, and common sense ain't that common right now. We have a great show ahead of us. We have Randall Terry, who's got a documentary called The Pandemic, The Threshing uh, of America. And Randall, I believe you're with us right now. Welcome to the Terry and Jesse show. I see you there. Good to be with you. God bless you. Well, Randall, you've gotten a little older in 35 years. I think the last <laughs> time you and I met. Yeah, you think, brother? I was 1988 in Orange County with Father jo- a young Father Joseph Fessio, and we were having an event with our Operation Rescue, and not long after that, we got arrested together. I think I had Dr. Bernard Nathanson at the event. Uh, he was also getting arrested. So, brother, uh, we're, uh, we're pals here. So God bless you for coming on board. I'm glad to be here, and I think that I look great for my age. I'm I'm 90. <laughs> hey, man, bro, you're round in third base like the rest of us. Hey, uh, Randall, uh, uh, you obviously have a long, long history oh, with yeah. the pro-life movement. You're you're one of the pioneers yeah, of Operation absolutely. Rescue. Uh, tell us what you're doing right now. Kind of give us a little bird's eye view. Of, from Operation Rescue to 2020, at, how did you got started in the pro-life movement? And then also share with us how you found your way into the Catholic Church. Woo, boy, there's a lot there. You're not kidding. Um, interrupt me anytime you want. I was uh, a young evangelical preacher in 1983, <laughs> and we broke up into small prayer groups at a, at a church. And a woman had come in earlier and was crying and said, I just saw a special on a and it's horrible, and we need to ask God to end this killing babies. This is 1983. Mm-hmm. And I had that sick feeling in my stomach that we all get when we think about babies being killed. Of course. So I went to this prayer room with about six other people, and I was pacing and praying, Jesus, show me what to do, Lord, please help. And I, believe it or not, it sounds crazy, but I had a vision. Mm-hmm. A scroll was coming down in front of my eyes explaining what I was to do to get people out by the thousands in front of abortion mills to re-educate the public to the value of human life from a biblical perspective. And I was stunned, shocked. And I didn't tell anyone. I literally didn't tell a soul because I, I didn't know if this was really from God, if it was just my imagination. So about a month later, I told one friend and he confirmed to me a couple of years later that when I told him, he thought I was crazy. He didn't say a single word when I told him he thought I was crazy. But I, I kept praying and I started searching the scriptures and I thought, okay, if this is from God, I'll be able to find something about it in the Bible. And I stumbled on this theme of innocent blood. And that set me on a path. When I began to study innocent blood from Genesis to Revelation, I saw more times than not, the phrase they shed innocent blood was directly related to killing babies, to killing small children, bringing them to the God of Molech. And the Jews, the temple, Jerusalem, the temple was destroyed. Jerusalem was destroyed. Most Jews were killed and a handful were to Babylon. All was because they shed the blood of their sons and daughters. And, and the Lord brought judgment. So when I started studying this, it was the fall of 1983. I really felt like, okay, this is God. The other thing that I saw in this vision, I know this is going to sound crazy. I saw myself on the Phil Donahue show. Yeah, I remember that. 
And, well, I saw it in the vision. Yeah. And so eight years later in 1991, I was on Donahue and I was this close to looking into the camera and saying, Pastor, see, I told you the vision is fulfilled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Randall, uh, yeah. when I, when I came <laughs> into the pro-life movement, I had graduated from an evangelical Protestant charismatic Bible college. So I was a preacher. I knew my Bible. And a lot of what I listened to, not much in my Bible school, but a lot of the Protestant world was, as you know, pretty anti-Catholic. And I did not think that Catholics were saved. I thought that they were worshiping idols. I thought that their devotion to Mary was a sacrilege. I mean, just the normal Protestant sure. stuff. But the more I hung out with Catholics and the more I started reading Catholic literature, Slowly but surely, I started to say, well, maybe some of them are, in fact, Christians. You know, <laughs> God forgive me, the arrogance of that. <laughs> but I I started defending Catholics. That's what got really weird. So I would be with hanging out with Protestants, and they would start berating Catholics. Well, they worship idols. I say, actually, no, they don't. Those are just images, and they venerate them. Or they pray to saints. And I'd say, well, no, actually, they don't. They ask the saints to pray for them. Or... They worship Mary. Well, no, they actually don't worship Mary. They just invoke her and ask her for her to go to her son on our behalf. So it became more and more awkward. <laughs> the more I learned about Catholic theology and the Catholic faith, I found myself defending it against ignorant uh, Protestant accusations. And what really started to draw me was the commitment against birth control the commitment against child killing, and the commitment to a male priesthood. I started to realize that Protestant denominations, they generally speak, and I'll be unkind to our Protestant brothers, but most of them, these denominations tend to come unwound. And you see major, major denominations that used to be ardently pro-life are now pro-abortion. And part of what really drew me was I, I knew in the core of my being that the Catholic Church is never going to change its position on child killing, ever. And so when I was in prison or on airplanes, you know, Father Marx, the founder of Human Life International, he and I went to Rome on a trip in 1991, and I got to sit with him and talk to him, and he, I think he heard my confession. <laughs> I mean, we, we, Joe Scheidler... Yeah. Um, other, uh, Father um, Wesley. Oh, luminaries in the pro-life movement. <laughs> yes. And I was with these guys all the time, oh, different yeah. events. Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> and they, Randall, you're going to make a great Catholic someday. <laughs> Joe. Mm -hmm. oh. Yep. I, I'm, ha I'm happy to inform you that they got half of it right. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, a ca I'm a Catholic. I don't know if I'm a good Catholic. Yeah, but I'm a Catholic. I hear you, brother. I remember those days. I remember that going. Randall, let me just uh, let me just give a good news story while you're telling your story that fits right in with you. Uh, in England, just this month, doctors told this mom to abort her sick baby twice. She gave birth to a healthy miracle baby. And what's interesting, Randall, at all these years you've been involved with the pro life movement. I've heard that story so many times where doctors have said, hey, the baby is uh, less than perfect. It's not going to work out. You should import the baby. And many times I've seen this happen over and over again. Haven't you seen that where the baby is born and the doctors were wrong? That's happened so of course. many times. I've, I've known people like that. Yes. I have friends like that. Absolutely. Who were told that they're going to have a, an imperfect baby and that they should kill their baby. Yeah. And they said, No. And then the baby turned out to be perfectly normal. If the baby wasn't healthy, that's not a reason to kill a king. Yeah. We don't kill the sick. Amen. We don't kill the maimed. We don't kill the infirmed. We love them. So the, the culture of death, I mean, you guys have covered this so many times on the, on the program. We don't have to uh, beat a dead horse. But the culture of death is committed to death. You know, most abortion providers, baby killers, they've never seen an abortion they didn't like. They'll support abortion up to the day of birth. We saw that in New York State last year where they signed that bill into law. That's what we're dealing with. 
spirit of death. They hate God. They love death. In fact, the Bible says that those who hate him love death. And, and that's the spirit that we're dealing with. Randall, this has cost you a lot uh, personally. I mean, I know they've the, the culture of death, Planned Parenthood or the forces of evil. They've gone after you financially. They've hauled you into court. I mean, you you've been fighting this demon for decades now, haven't you? <laughs> yes. Um, the, the cost that I have paid is small by comparison to what Christians have endured under the heel of Islam in the Orthodox community. I mean, so I, I, I always want to make it clear that there are Christians who wake up every morning all over the world yep. who are in fear of being taken because in a, in a communist country or in a Muslim country. So by comparison, you know, I've gone to jail many times. I've had police rough me up. I've had threatened numbers of times with credible, you know, the coming to me and saying, we've got somebody who wants to kill you, local police department saying we have custody who has threatened to kill you. And that was a few years ago, but, um, you know, I've had death threats from the Muslims, lost my home, the NOW and Planned Parenthood sued me. We won every case in federal court, but I lost two cases in New York state and in Texas state court. Interesting. And those two judgments against me allowed the baby killers to take everything, literally mm. everything. They got everything except my library, my books, which you see behind me. That is not a, a green screen. That is actually part of my library. <laughs> this is a green screen behind me, brother. Randall, we got to take, I knew a, quick, that. We gotta take a quick break. Uh, we're uh, here with Randall Terry talking about his life and serving Christ and also the unborn. When we come back, we're going to ask him some questions about not only Operation Rescue, but uh, I want to get the point of how he came into the Catholic Church a little bit more. So you'll want to hear that on the flip side of this break. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse Show on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Don't turn that dial. We'll be right back. Help the Helpless, a Minnesota St. Paul nonprofit organization chaired by Father of Tear and volunteers, is humbly asking you for your kind support to help the poor and the handicapped children in India and Ecuador. Through financial support from the help of the helpless benefactors, the children are provided with clothing, food, education, shelter, and the teachings of the Catholic Church. The mission is to help children thrive and become self-sufficient young adults leading productive lives. We also provide aid to poor families in Ecuador with food baskets, medicines, medical assistance, and help with funeral needs for the deceased. The work in India is done by Father Antonio's organization, St. Mary's. In Ecuador, the work is being done by the Servant Sisters of the Home of Mother. You can call us at 877-762-8857. To learn more, please visit our website, www.helpthehelpless.org. God bless you. Sirach 1124 says, Do not say, I am self-sufficient. What harm can come to me now? According to St. Catherine of Siena, presumption is like vermin burrowing at the root of the tree of our soul. If we do not uproot it with great care and humility, it will eventually destroy the soul. May God keep us from all presumption of mind and heart and realize that we depend on Him for everything. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877 543-3871 because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. 
To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Rated PG, praise God, we got Randall Terry on of the Terry and Jesse Show. Randall, so who was the catalyst? What, what Catholics were the catalyst to bring you from uh, crossing the Tiber from, uh, <laughs> uh, from, from, the, from the Rhine into Rome? How, how did that happen? That was, was uh, some of these priests, Father, Father Marks, Marks uh, some of these other people that you were, that you were networking yeah. with. Who was the one that really had a big influence on you? Well, Father John McLeunis, who was a pastor in Binghamton, New York, yeah. he and I, our friendship goes back uh, nearly 37 years. So I, I'm a student, I read, I'm still a student, and the more I read about the Catholic faith, the more I became convinced of its validity. So my particular journey took me through the charismatic Episcopal Church, which is seven sacraments, only men priests, hardcore pro-life, love God. And if you went into a charismatic Episcopal church, it's not connected with Anglicanism in England. It's actually part of a schismatic Roman Catholic bishop from Brazil. Oh, yeah, I'm familiar. Yep. So the orders are obviously um, not in line with, and, and there have been several, uh, some of whom you guys know, who were priests in the charismatic Episcopal church or Absolutely. even one archbishop yeah, I know. who became Roman Catholic priests. Yep. So on my particular journey, the more I read, it really boiled down to papal infallibility, Christian dogma, and purgatory. Those things were stumbling blocks for me. Mm -hmm. And I was fast uh, during Lent in 2006 for 40 days on just fluids. And in the midst of that fast... You know, I kept asking my charismatic bishop, who I love dearly, great man of God, and I would say, now, why aren't we Catholic again? <laughs> why aren't we Roman Catholic? <laughs> so I had an experience in my 40-day fast. I, I felt like one day I was praying, and I felt like the Holy Spirit said to me, what would you say if I told you that the reason for this fast is for you to become Roman Catholic? <laughs> and... I said, well, what else could I say but yes? <laughs> and and then I took a nap and I woke up and I called up Father John Mikleunis, uh, maybe a day or two later. And I, I, I was speaking to Paul Shank, who I know you guys know, who's a priest now. Yeah. And he is he and I are good friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, Michael Hirsch, an attorney who was Protestant. And he became Catholic. And I picked up the phone and I said, I, I think I'm, you know, I'm, I'm really struggling with these things. And I talked to them about Marian, uh, Mariology, papal infallibility, and purgatory. And they went through them yet again for me, but they used a vocabulary, both of them as former Protestants, that I could understand as a Protestant. And once I had faith and I said, oh, okay, I get it. Once I got it, and I knew that I knew, then I called up Father John Mikleunis, and I said, Father John, I owe you an apology. It had been such a blessing to me through thick and thin, just a dear friend. Let me speak at his church. He came out to pro-life events. He would visit me in jail. I mean, he was there when I needed him. When I went through a, a horrific divorce in 1999, he was there for me. I would go to mass at his church. I didn't receive communion, but I would go to mass and you know, I, he would hear my confession. I said, Father John, I think I'm supposed to become Catholic. And I'm really sorry thing I've ever said to you against the Catholic faith, please forgive me. He said, oh, don't worry about it. He said, I'll receive you into the church. I'll bring you in because he knew I knew the faith. He knew that I had been studying the faith and wrestling with the faith for probably 20 years by that time. Wow. So he said, what's your schedule look like? <laughs> so my wife and I Love flew it. up to his church in Binghamton. And on Holy Thursday, Maundy Thursday, he received me and my wife into the Roman Catholic Church. Wow. I remember that, Randall, actually. That was big news for a lot of us. 
Well, it was a, it was big news for me personally. I bet. And as you can imagine, yeah. <laughs> it alienated a lot of my oh, non-Roman Catholic friends. Oh yeah. God knows. God knows. Well, let me ask you this. Just you want to get in? I have to. I have to yeah, say but, something for yeah. you. Yeah. Tell I have us. To say something yeah. for your listeners, if yeah. I may. Yeah. Early on in my pro-life work, I ceased saying anything negative about Roman Catholics or Baptists or Assemblies of God or anyone. Mm -hmm. And this is something that your listeners would be benefited by, I hope. Good, good. When I was trying to save a baby, it, 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 it occurred to me, if my child was drowning and I needed someone's help to save my daughter, Please help me. My daughter is literally about to die. If someone come up, came up to me and said, I'll help you, I wouldn't say to them, well, wait a minute. Do you pray to saints? Do you pray a rosary? No. Are you saved? Are you born again? Do you speak in tongues? Do you believe in 66 books in the Bible or 73? Yeah. I wouldn't do that because my the immediacy of my daughter's life being saved is what would matter. Absolutely. And so a pushed myself into this grid of the murdering babies by the millions. And if my child is worth me working with Christians of various denominations, even ones I don't agree with, my child's life is worth it, then every child's life is worth it. Amen. So Make, yeah. that is why I was able to work with Roman Catholics so closely for many years. And now I work with Protestants because my mission before God, the call of God on my life is to be a voice for the babies and hopefully be one of the instruments in his hands to again, make it a crime, a criminal act to kill a human being from the moment of conception until the moment of birth. That is what the pro-life movement is. So if someone asks you in a catechetical form, what is the purpose of the pro-life movement? The answer is the purpose of the pro-life movement is to make it a crime to kill an unborn child from conception until birth, period. That's it. Well said. Randall, over the weekend, I watched an incredible documentary that many people send me. It was called Pandemic, the Threshing of America. And uh, what inspired you to make this documentary? As I watched it, it looked to me like a it was a journey through the Bible where you demonstrate, you show the way God deals with his people, the Israelites, and you show the history of plagues. You show the history of child killing, the interconnectedness. You show the history of idolatry. And as I watched your documentary over the weekend, I said to myself, it's all here today in America. It's, it's here in living color. Heck, it's even in our church in many, in many respects. To me, this documentary, it, it, it has prophetic overtones. What was your motive for doing this? Are you sounding the alarm? I'm definitely sounding the alarm. Um, my first book was Operation Rescue, uh, released in, I think, 88 or 89. And in that book, there's two or three chapters about the judgment of God. Because when, when as, as I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, when I had that vision, the connection to innocent blood is always, it, or not always, but often spoken of in the scriptures as connected to the judgment of God. So when this came, I had, I already had her coach and people, uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. We have a eight foot motor coach is covered with images of aborted babies and Bible verses talking about the judgment of God. And we drive this motor coach to political rallies, to these in city hall. We get tons of press coverage, warning people of the judgment of God because of the killing of babies and saying that we, you know, we have to protect babies. So this has been my message for 35 years. There's nothing new here. But when the pandemic hit, I thought, okay, I'm going to start a book, Sword, Famine, and Plague, the, a book on the judgment of God. And uh, as you know, I've become a filmmaker uh, in my spare time. A few years ago, about six years ago, one of our sons was diagnosed with cancer and was fighting for his life. So we had to leave our home and move to Memphis, Tennessee. And 
during that, I really started to hone my skills as a writer and a maker and a documentary man. And when I started writing the book on the judgment of God, I thought, well, good grief. I just have to bang out a documentary really fast. And we worked our tails off for, I don't know, three weeks and spent the money to spend and created a documentary, The Threshing of America, to warn the church that America is in grave danger of judgment because the blood of the innocent is crying from the ground. You look at plagues, fear, economic meltdown, violence, looting, riots, terrorist attacks. All of these are spelled out in great detail in the scriptures as one of the ways that God will deal with nations. So Pandemic, the movie, which people can see for free on my website, randallterry.com. It's there on the front page, randallterry.com. Um, the movie takes us through the way that God dealt with Israel. And then about two thirds of the way through, I say, okay, now let's look at New York City, mm. the abortion capital of America. One in 10 babies that dies in America dies in that city. Wow. There are portions of New York City where more babies are killed than are born alive. And New York City was hit the hardest with the COVID. And I think that they are directly related. So, and then of course, as you know, I, I talked to the, the leadership of the evangelical churches and the Roman Catholic Church. Because yep. the Bible says that judgment begins at the house of God. Right. And I believe with all my heart that if the Roman Catholic leadership and the evangelical leadership in this country were to simply say, we are done letting this Holocaust continue. We vow before God to never vote again for a single candidate from any party, for any office, any judge. We vow to never vote for a baby. No one who says, I have a choice. We would have done that 30 years ago. Holocaust would already be over, and the history books would be talking about the great victory that we had won, like the civil rights movement had great victories in the 1960s to end the Jim Crow laws and to end segregation. Mm. We'd have already won. So it is our negligence, our fear, our cowardice, which is even worse than fear. That's right. And our treachery mm -hmm. to God and to the babies that has allowed this Holocaust to continue. Randall, let me jump in. I hear the music. We're going to take a quick break and talk more about your documentary, The Pandemic, The uh, Threshing of America. I remember also, folks, 30-some years ago when you had a song, Were You There When the Battle Raged? You remember that? Oh, I do. Randall Terry, randallterry.com. Go to his website. Watch the movie. It's free. We'll be back with much more on The Terry and Jesse Show on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Hi, this is Jesse Romero from the Terry and Jesse Show, also from Jesus 911. Let's face it, we all need to use the internet, but we need screen accountability. Why? Pornography is a huge problem, especially on the internet. And every time we tap into the internet, we get bombarded with images and temptations that degrade our humanity. So we need Covenant Eyes to block these pornographic sites and advertisements from infiltrating our lives. Covenant Eyes helps us take custody of our eyes and custody of our intellect. So I recommend you go to CovenantEyes.com and type in the promo code VMPR to support the network. Protect yourself and your family from the imminent threats on the internet. www.CovenantEyes.com code VMPR live porn free. Thank you for listening to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Thank you. God bless you. Keep the faith. Healthcare news today seems to be coming from everywhere and everyone. 
It's confusing, at least, and untrustworthy at the worst. Dr. Asetta is a faithful Catholic in the Kern County community. He is trustworthy, well-researched, and will only give expert opinion on matters in his own specialty. Catholic teaching at its entirety is of utmost importance to Dr. Asetta. Give Dr. Asetta a call for your obstetrics and gynecological needs at 661-695-6617. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888 526 2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back. We've got not two evangelical Catholics, we've got three evangelical Catholics with PhDs in common sense, and common sense is not that common. Randall Terry was joining us here to talk about this new documentary called The Pandemic, The Threshing of America. And Randall, people can get that for free by going to your website, randallterry.com. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. My question next is, I, we don't beat around the bush. We're not right versus left. We're right versus wrong. And I'm going to tell you this, uh, Randall, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. The Democratic Party is the party of Moloch. Do you believe that we're now in the 11th hour? That's my question to you, brother. Well, there's two ways that people come at this. Um, To to talk in Catholic ease, Catholic parlance, Mm -hmm. the Persian, the second coming. Mm -hmm. When when evangelicals talk about eschatology, they mean the second coming. Is there a rapture? Is there a tribulation? Mm -hmm. When we talk about the last days, the last things, the four last things, we mean death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Amen. We speak past each other oftentimes, but I, you know, no man knows the day or the hour of the Lord's return. I personally don't think that that's what's going on. I think if it is the 11th hour, it could be the 11th hour for America. And that, you know, I'm, I'm in America. And most of the um, end times mad preoccupation, the second coming of Christ, which is a issue in the evangelical world and has influenced a lot of Roman Catholics as well. I think that much of that is highly American centered Mm -hmm. because most of the books and the movies and TV series, these things have just the landscape for the last 30 years. Most of them originate from America. True. So, when the Russian Revolution happened and the Tsar and his family were killed, there were a lot of Orthodox people who thought that it was the end of time. There have been other Christians who have suffered at different points, and they thought, really beginning with the first generation of Christians, that Jesus is coming any day now. Well, he didn't come. He will come someday. Right. But for them, it was the 11th hour. And... In America right now, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, well, you said we don't have to mince words here. No, don't. I, I don't know that we can survive a Biden presidency. I agree with you. Mm. And by that, what I mean is Biden is not all there. And that means he's going to have people around him that are aggressive. They're young. They have an agenda. And that agenda is usually nine times out of 10, hostile, openly hostile to Jesus Christ, to Christianity, to the church, and to the babies. And if we embrace child-killing Roman like Joe Biden, there will be hell to pay for it. So if you look, again, to come back to the film, Pandemic, if you want to watch it, please feel free, but you'll see the stages that God took Israel through and warning after warning after warning. And God said in his word in Jeremiah chapter 18, if I decree evil and disaster against a people, 
any nation. He says any nation. And that nation repents of its evil. God said, I'll repent of the, of the disaster I planned for them. But if a nation does righteousness and they turn from their righteousness, I will turn away from blessing them and I'll bring disaster on them. So even in the 11th hour, Jeremiah was in prison. King Zedekiah came to him. Babylon, Babylonian armies were surrounding them. Hostages had already been taken. And Zedekiah said, what do I do? What do I do? And Jeremiah said, surrender to the king of Babylon and he'll let you live and he won't burn the city. Now, now remember, Jeremiah preached for 40 years that God was going to destroy Jerusalem and destroy the temple. 40 years. Mm. And even at the end, God said, look, if Zedekiah will just serve to Babylon, I'll spare the city. Even though God had told Jeremiah to tell the, the Jerusalem and it would be destroyed. So I think that there's a sword hanging our heads. I agree. Mm. I think that we're in great danger. And I think that the pandemic and the fear, the economic meltdown, the violence that we're seeing in some of our cities, I think that these are all the first fruits of judgment. So the question is, will we give God a reason to show mercy? Will we give God a reason to mitigate his judgment? We're going to be judged. Mm -hmm. But will we give God a reason to mitigate it? And that is what he's looking for, the fruits of repentance and the overarching fruit that God is looking for. It's not more prayer. It's not more church attendance. It's repenting over child killing. It's repenting. Yeah. yeah. Randall, there's a... It's, there's repent, it's repenting over our sins. Now, let, me, let me get really specific. 55% of Roman Catholics in America said they will not vote to re-elect Donald Trump. In the recent elections, over half of the Catholics voted for Clinton, Obama, and then Clinton, the woman, the wife. One third of evangelicals voted for these baby-killing candidates. We have blood on our hands. Amen. Yeah. And here's the illustration that I give people and I, and I encourage your viewers, let these words soak into your heart and then tell them to your Catholic friends and your evangelical friends. All right, here it is. If I'm in my house and someone knocks on the door and says, Hey, I need you to take me for a ride in your car. Oh, what do you need? I need to go to the drugstore to get medicine for my mom. I need to go to the grocery store to get food for my family and food for some poor people. And I need to go to the bank. And when I'm at the bank, I'm going to rob the bank and shoot the teller. If you give him a ride in your car, if I give him a ride, knowing his intent, when he's done with that whole trip and he's arrested, I am an accessory to his crime. That's correct. Because I knew his intent. So I can't stand before a judge and say, well, your honor, I didn't agree with the bank. I wasn't really even sure he was going to do it. But... I was supportive of him getting medicine for his mom, supportive of him getting food for his family and for other poor people. And I didn't believe in that whole bank thing, but that was what he said. But that was just one part of the trip. That wasn't the whole trip. I would still be an accessory to murder and to bank robbery. So when Joe Biden, Pelosi, or any one of these godless people says, I'm going to make... I'm going to treat immigrants better and I'm going to work harder for the American family and I'm going to have food for your family and for your parents and I'm going to kill babies. I'm going to have judges that support Roe versus Wade and I'm going to use federal tax dollars to pay for a woman's right to choose. If you vote for that person, you have blood on your hands because they told you what they were going to do. You knew their intention and God's not going to say, oh, well, yeah, you know, Food is really important, and, and uh, Medicaid and Medicare, they're important. Yeah, they're, they're equal to child killing. No. Hmm. The number one sin that cries out to God for vengeance is blood. That's what John Paul II said. That's what the scriptures teach, that the four sins that cry out to God for vengeance, the number one is, child, or is shedding innocent blood. Yep. And if we keep voting for these baby killers, we're doomed. So the repentance, the fruit of the repentance, that God is specifically looking for is that we stop 
voting for baby killers, period. Amen. Well said, Randall. R- Randall, is, it, is this pandemic, would you say it's the chastening hand of God Almighty on America? And if so, why do you think that is? I mean, some other people think that it's Mother Earth groaning and just getting upset with us. <laughs> but uh, I, I like the way you come at it with scripture. Uh, and also, second question I want to ask you, is President Trump kind of a King Cyrus of Persia-like figure for us today? I think that the current pandemic, I believe that the current pandemic, the fear, the economic meltdown, all of this is the chastening hand of God upon us. We, the Bible says God is not mocked. We reap what we sow. And sometimes we, we reap more than we sow. And sometimes the crop is different. So the Jews sowed child killing, idolatry in Solomon's temple homosexual prostitution booths inside Solomon's temple. And what they reaped was the sword, famine, and plague, and the destruction of Jerusalem and the destruction of the temple. So is President Trump a type of a Cyrus? It appears that way to me. He, you know, part of the problem with the Christian community is we want porcelain saints and we want flawless political leaders. That didn't work that way. King David committed adultery and then yep. murder through the armies of his enemy. He had Uriah the Hittite killed. But he was a of God's own heart. And even after David committed those crimes, God used him to write portions of the scripture. After those crimes, mm-hmm. he still is the author of the greatest songs of all time and the greatest song of repentance is Psalm 51, which was written by David after he committed those crimes. So King Cyrus, as you know, Jesse, was a pagan. And after the judgment came on Jerusalem and on the temple, it was Cyrus who said, any Jew who wants can go back to Jerusalem, rebuild the city, rebuild the house of their God. So, President Trump has turned out to be a surprise for all of us because he hasn't flinched on the pro-life battle. He spoke for the first time any president in American history. He spoke at the March for Life. He, in his campaign, said that women who kill their children someday, that, yeah, they're going to have to face jail time. Now, he walked that back a little bit, but he's the first um, candidate at a national level that has ever said that my lifetime and that is the truth you have to make it a crime to kill a baby like it's a crime to kill a newborn baby randall why is this so hard to figure out it's simple really you're listening to the terry and jesse show randall terry has a new documentary called a pandemic the threshing of america go to his website randallterry.com we come back i got a big question for randall don't turn that dial we'll be right back Jesus said in Luke 17, When you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have only done our duty. According to St. John of the Cross, God is pleased with the little deeds we do in secret. He takes more pleasure in these than in a multitude of grand works that we may do out of the desire to be seen by others. May God help us to do the things that please Him and not just to appear great in the eyes of others. Tummy. How does the baby eat? Can the baby hear me? How did the baby get in there? Wow, a pregnancy can sure generate a lot of questions, but what's important is that a baby is a baby inside and out of the womb, not just after birth, but nine months before. 
at conception. That's right, every baby is a miracle. Hello, my name is Marianne Koharski. I'm the director of Pro Life Across America. If you know someone who is pregnant or in need of alternatives or assistance or would like to support the work of Pro Life Across America, please visit our website at prolifeacrossamerica.org or better yet, simply dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say the keyword pro life. Pro Life Across America is non political and totally educational. A baby's heart is beating 18 days from conception. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. Jesse's in Texas, but he'll be back uh, next week. Jess, just a quick note. What are you doing in Texas? Is that Bishop Strickland where... You're no, in. I, I, I'm actually in Houston. Oh, I, Houston. I, I, okay. uh, yeah, okay. Cardinal Donardo's. Uh, yeah. I'm giving you a, a three day parish mission out Good. here Good. on uh, how to get to heaven, Terry. You know, that's, uh, that's you know, key, that's baby. my stick there. Yep, that is. Yep. Just to let everybody know, Bishop Strickland's new show is going to be coming up with the Virgin Most Powerful. I tell you, there's a bishop who's, who's speaking for the unborn. But right now we have Randall Terry on. Jess, why don't you ask the next question? I was going to ask the Chinese connection with this, but you, you go ahead, brother. Yeah, Randall, uh, this movie that I watched over the weekend, uh, it was it, it was to me, it was earth shattering because you, you connected all the dots for me. A lot of things that were that were just kind of loosely, you know, in, in my orbit, you put it all together. So with this biblical perspective that you put on the movie, what role is China playing? Communist China, what role are they playing in chastising America with, hey, I don't, I don't call it the COVID-19. It's the Wuhan communist Chinese virus. And uh, we know that China, is, they're also an emerging power in Asia. What role are they playing in all of this? It's a great question. A lot of times, something feels unjust. I, don't, I believe it was Habakkuk, but forgive me if I'm wrong, who said, look, you're judging us with that nation, and they're more wicked than us. God said to Jeremiah, I'm going to bring against you, Babylon, the worst of the nations. Hmm. And then God said in more than one place, when I'm done using Babylon to judge you, I'm going to judge Babylon. And if you look at Jeremiah chapter 45 to 51, that's where God begins to pronounce judgments on pagan nations. And Babylon ultimately was completely destroyed the city, the capital city, is a ruin to this. Wow. So think of me, Delphi, the, the core of the Grecian Empire, it's a ruin. The forum, the core of the political, religious, economic, military power in Rome, mm-hmm. ruin. Babylon, the city, a ruin. Nineveh. Another huge capital for another massive, the Assyrian Empire, a ruin. But these were all evil nations. I mean, that's what's really crazy is that God said to the Jews, I'm bringing the worst of nations against you. Hmm. Yeah, then I'm going to punish them. So I think that China is clearly a threat, not just to America. It is the, the most oppressive bloody regime I would in the history of the human race. They have killed probably 250 or 300 million babies by abortion. They have suppressed the church, both the Catholic church and any little Christian sect. These are demonic monsters. And yet, just like with ancient Babylon, God can use a wicked nation to punish other nations, and then he'll turn around and he'll deal with them. 
the timing of God, how God's going to do it, I don't know. I don't know. All I have for certain for me is the blueprint that we see in the script. All 73 books. There is a blueprint there. It is easy to follow, as you saw, Jesse, yep. in, the, in the movie, Pandemic. It's easy to follow. You just have to know where to look, and you have to do the discipline of the study, and that's what I have done. I mean, I've been studying in thousands of hours the judgment of God for decades. So that's why there was that seamless flow in the movie Pandemic. Randall, I like the way you tied in ancient Jerusalem to modern day New York City. For somebody who's just tuning in right now, can you make that connection one more time? Yes, Jerusalem is that King Manasseh shed so much innocent blood, the king of, of Israel, Judah, that he, he shed so much innocent blood that he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood in its length and its breadth. And, and the scripture says, and the Lord would not forgive. He brought punishments. And again and again, it specifically says because of the sins of Manasseh and the blood that he, the killing of children. So go to New York City. City is the abortion of America. It's where the Holocaust really began in earnest in 1969. And it is, they just signed that bill into law a year and a half ago where they're going to allow killing babies up to the day of birth. And they, the, one in 10 babies in America dies in New York City. Of the babies that are aborted, one-tenth of the whole country is in that city. So I believe that you can just connect the dots. They're murdering children on an unprecedented scale. And God brought the COVID on an unprecedented scale and the economic meltdown that is happening in one of the wealthiest cities in the world, in the history of the human race. They are in a crisis. And that godless man, Mario, or I mean, um, Andrew Cuomo, yeah. these, he is, and de Blasio, these people are enemies of humanity. They are enemies of Christ. They are enemies of the church. They are enemies of the babies. And they are going to drive that city further and further into the jaws of hell. Randall, let me jump in and say, why don't you really tell me what you think, okay? I mean, don't beat around. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Randall, one question. Just recently, we had Father uh, Frank Pavone on talking about Norma McCorvey's deathbed conversion, supposedly that was written out by uh, some of the pro-abortion people. I want to know what your reaction to all that was. Do you, re do you recall that? Just happening last I saw time. the movie. I saw the movie. I did my own documentary on Norma called A Cold Day in Hell. Okay. The conversion of Norma McCorvey. People can go to randallterry.com and they can see that for free. Good. Well, I, I want to see that. Yeah. You'll enjoy it. I was a friend of Norma's. I mean, Tell I spent a, a lot bit. of time with Norma. She lived in my home for a month when she was in a rough spot. Mm -hmm. I think that she wavered from time to time mm -hmm. about killing babies in the first trimester. I think that she they might have gotten her drunk. If you look at the film, she was drinking. They took her out to get her hair done and her nails done, and she's sitting there slamming mimosas. Mm -hmm. And I think that they might, I, 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 I wasn't there, I don't know, but I think they might have gotten her a little tipsy. Yeah. And then when you got Norma in the right mood, she could be crazy. I mean, she really could. Yeah. She was an alcoholic. She was a drug addict. She had a lot of emotional issues. Yeah. And... All I know is that her conversion was real. Yeah. There's no doubt in my mind that her conversion to Christ and then to the Roman Catholic Church was absolutely real. So this, this filmmaker is a godless man. Mm -hmm. He has done films that are so perverted, they don't deserve to be discussed on this show. And if you look at his history as a filmmaker, you know he's got an agenda that is sick. So he was licking his chops. Thank you. And the fact that he didn't, interview certain people yeah. shows that he could not be taken seriously as a filmmaker. Well said. Thank you for that comment. Jesse? Randall, let's get, let's get down to solutions here. We've only got a few minutes left. Uh, what has America done wrong and what can America do to receive God's blessings in this troubling time? America is made up of people. And I want to address the individuals that are watching and listening right now. Courage is like a muscle. You have to exercise it. So there are people right now who are pro-life. They know that abortion is murder. And yet, 
what if I'm going to speak right to you, the listener, right to you, the viewer. If you were put on trial today for trying to stop abortion, deny a woman's right to choose, could you be convicted by public actions and public words? So what we need to do is to sound arm. Hey, they're killing babies with the pathos, the passion, the courage that is equal to the crime. People say, oh, you're so intense or you're so direct. And I'm thinking, what? they're killing people. For the love of God, they're ripping babies apart. If someone was being killed right in front of me, I wouldn't say, excuse me, let's have a calm discussion about the ethics of this act. No, I would scream murder. Amen. So as individuals, we need to be going to the abortion mills, but we need to be going to our pastors, our priests, our bishops, and saying, you need to, sp you need to publicly state that it is a mortal sin to vote for a baby-killing candidate. <laughs> we need to vow before God that we won't vote for baby killers and that we'll tell our friends, our families, the people that we go to church with, that they can't vote for baby killers. The repentance that we must embrace is the end of this Holocaust. It's the only thing that's going to save our country. We could get every other thing right, but if we keep killing our babies, we're doomed. So <clears throat> I beg your pardon. We take trips. I want to invite people to go to my website, randallterry.com, and email me personally. My personal email address is randallterry2020 at gmail.com. You are willing to hold a protest, a demonstration, a press conference, any level of activism where you're actually in the public square, where you might be on television or in the newspaper so that your voice can be heard by, instead of 10 people, by 10,000 people. If you are willing to do that, I will train you. I've been doing it for 35 years. I know what I'm doing. Also, we have... We have a motor coach that we take to cities. We're buying our second motor coach right now. And we will take that motor coach with words about pro-life, images of babies. We'll be taking it all over the country, both of these coaches. If you are willing to help us with that, go to randallterry.com, make a contribution. The other thing you could do is you could pre-order my upcoming book, Sword, Famine, and Plague. But the big thing is, guys, and I'm going to say this <laughs> as I mean it. Say it. I'm sick of fundraising letters. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the piles of mail coming from organizations that touch hot buttons like, like child killing or marriage or terror. And they're fundraising machines. I want to teach people how to fight. I don't want to teach people just how to think. I want to teach them how to fight, how to act, how to be courageous. And I don't mean with guns. I mean with words, with signs, with demonstrations, with marches, with prayer vigils, where we're outside in the pub and we are a part of mixing. The reason that Antifa and Black Lives Matter are dominating the news is because no one is going out there to stand against them. Well said, Randall. Hey, I want everybody to go to randallterry.com, get the documentary. Jesse Romero, what state should we, all of us, should be living in, brother? Let's all live in a state of sanctifying grace. Don't live in a state of mortal sin. And uh, pick up your rosaries, rush to the battle lines, take your Bible with Jesus in your heart. Uh, we know how the story ends. Thanks again for Thank joining Thank you for having me, guys. God love you, Randall. Thanks again, everybody, for listening to the Terry and Jesse Show. Up next, Matt Arnold Show. Don't miss it on virginmostpowerfulradio.org is our website. May God richly bless you and full sheen ahead. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests O oh my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole Church, grant it love and the light of thy Spirit, and give power to the words of priests so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to Thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou Thyself maintain them in holiness. O Divine and Great High Priest, may the power of Thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set 
for the souls of priests. May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin most powerful, pray for us.